Introducing Advantech X-Factor, a new premium subflooring with a built-in barrier for job site durability with Advantech brand's signature strength and stiffness. So whatever the expectation, go beyond with Advantech X-Factor. I'm Jake Bruton, and today on the Unbuild It podcast, I'm joined by my co-hosts, Steve Basic and Peter Yost. Say hello, gentlemen. Hello, hello gentlemen. gentlemen. There we go. And we are going to talk about uh, the three little pigs. Really? Yeah. So This is all about bacon? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good callback joke for everybody that hasn't been with us today. <laughs> uh, no, we're going to talk about... A house built on wood instead of out of wood. We're going to say on wood. Uh, and you and I talked about this, Peter, a little bit in the like houses that we've lived in episode. Yeah. Uh, and we actually realized that both of us have lived in a house with a permanent this. wood foundation. Yeah. yeah. So let's start with what is a permanent wood foundation. You want to go first? I'll go first. So. I'm going to go back to the house that I lived in with my wife at the NHP Research Center because the first time I went in the basement, I thought there was a serious problem. Um, I had never, I didn't even know that you could make a foundation out of wood. And so the basic construct was two by six pressure treated lumber sheathed on the exterior with uh, pressure treated plywood and I had no idea how they kept it moisture managed. I had no idea how it transferred load from soil to the frame to the rest of the building. And uh, yeah, I was shocked. I just assumed that the only thing you could build on was concrete. So this is a pivotal day in Peter's life, it sounds like. Like he really understood something. Do you think Peter's wife remembers this day at all? That him walking down there and going, by golly, all loud. Sorry, I figured that was how people talked when things were in black and white. Uh, the sad thing is that's probably pretty close <laughs> to what by I golly. Said. And then him explaining it to his wife. Do you think she was as awestruck? He's asleep still. Oh, you're asking me a question. Yeah, well, sorry, I was looking oh, at I you, you were and talking in general. Um, no, I don't think Peter's I don't wife think she gets was awestruck. Either. So it's pretty. Yeah. Let's as we normally do. Let's start at the very bottom. Let's answer that first question. How do we transfer the load to the soil if there's no concrete down there? Why are we not panicked? Yeah, and I'm pretty sure that that. I mean, I couldn't tell because there was a slab poured, but I'm pretty sure that was just load spread from the two by six to uh, free draining gravel. I don't even know if there was a concrete footing underneath that because. Of course, one of the main advantages of the pressure-treated wood foundation is that you do not necessarily have to pour a footing. Yep. So it's come up in podcasts before when, with us when we talk about like the loads of a home. It's really not that much weight. And once you disperse it over the area of the wall, you know, even just it's five and a half inches wide by one inch long, that's more than 10 square inches. Like very quickly we get to large surface areas, even though we just think of it as a wall plate and we think of it as not being very much. Uh, I believe that in the 80s, the, uh, what was it called? Uh, and it wasn't permanent wood foundations back then. There was a different n nomenclature for it. I don't remember what it was called now. It'll come to me. Uh, that it was a six inches, six to eight inches of compacted three-quarter aggregate. Right. And then a two by ten with a two by six wall sitting on top of it. So effectively, your two by ten was your footing. And you know what's interesting about this to me is that there are so many things because of the way I learned how to build, where I, just, I I assumed that the code requires that you have a you know two foot concrete footing, mm -hmm. but the code the code under the prescriptive approach says, hey, you don't have to know anything about the soils. You don't have to worry about anything about what's under that if you do this a concrete work. footing. Yeah. So it's like, well, okay, then that's what we're going to use. Whereas you can know what the performance properties are of the soil or the compacted fill that you put on top of that and engineer a load spreading from that. Yeah. 
Uh, we also should should note that this while it is code approved, it's a it's one of the sections of the code where it just says if you follow this industry standard and it references the industry standard, uh, and it is titled permanent wood foundations. That's the easiest way to find information on it online. Uh, also, there is uh, <clears throat> the BS and Beer podcast mm. with Travis, uh, Michael Maines, Ben Bogey, Emily Matram. Uh, they had myself and Mike Girton on, and I learned more about this topic from Mike in that conversation uh, than I did in the, the time living in one and having, you know. Now, been I just want to too. point out that our buddy Steve <clears throat> here is uncharacteristically quiet. And we, we a both, normal level of grumpy, but, but more quiet than normal. But, but we, uh, Jake and I know the reason I think why Steve has been holding back a yeah, little bit. No idea. Hmm. Well, then enlighten me, brother. I'm trying to figure out why they call it permanent wood foundations. We don't call it permanent concrete foundations. Well, you know, so can I come after a little bit? I think it's a it's a like a marketing branding yeah. thing. Sure. You have to say it's permanent wood because with wood you need to make that distinction. Does that make sense? <laughs> but why not just call it a wood foundation system? PR. That's what That's I was all. trying to say. But I, right. I couldn't think of the acronym. Well, you don't call it per- permanent ICF foundations, and they could do well, that. Are they That's permanent? Marketing. I don't think they need to make that distinction, but the wood people do. I don't like the word permanent. And I'm okay. contemplating it quietly. So let's just, let's just say wood argue, foundations. Then. Argumenting the... Argumenting. Making an argument in my own mind on this idea. It must be a permanent. struggle to be you with as much arguing as goes on in terms Even of... Even when he's not talking to anybody else. But come on, hit me. I, I know you have an opinion about this, and I, or let's say reservations... Beyond the use of the word permanent. Uh, I think you're you're obfuscating. You're trying to say, like, watch my concentration on the word, t- the Obstuscate. terminology, because I have deeper concerns I don't want to share. Illusionist. Illusionist. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't like them. I don't know why. And I'm trying to figure that out. And that's not but like it, you. That's, that's a very like honest you. statement, though. Like, and I don't know why was just as important in that. Yeah, that I don't know and why. I think that like, most I shouldn't people be would afraid say that. of it. I should be up for alternatives, but just something about wood foundations. But don't, don't you think that's what the majority of builders in the United States would do? Is they, they'd go, well, wait probably, a minute, why are we trying to do this any different? That it works the other way. Why would we do that? So yeah. So I guess the question is, why would we do it? Okay, mm-hmm. maybe to get rid of concrete. But, yep, horrible from an environmental standpoint. But is cutting down a forest and decarbonizing? I think there's act. a renewable resource argument it there. Is, that's but I, been... I think we're going to be in tune for, and, and I have no idea, but I think we're in in uh, we're we're not far away from getting some enlightenment about the whole decarboning and using wood and stuff, and that you know. Bad forestry practices and stuff and cutting trees down and all that is not, even though it is a renewable resource, is not necessarily a great practice. But I don't think that's what's making, and I'm pushing on this, Steve, no, because no, no, it is, I, it too, a, am a little bit uncomfortable it isn't with... That. Well, it, I'm just sitting here saying, okay, a concrete, concrete foundation works, and why do I need to change? Like, okay, I get it. We don't want to use concrete, but is wood the best alternative? Like, I did a perfect block foundation. We took out 70% of the concrete, Mm -hmm. replaced it with recycled EPS. Okay, how about we're building someplace that concrete's very difficult to come by? There are no ready mix plants. We're going to have to mix on site. Cold cold joints will be in our foundation footings. And to boot, you want to be able to put foundations in the ground when it's really cold. I mean, give me a place on earth that it's like that. Uh, Canada. Northern Wisconsin. Okay, all, all of okay, so northern Wisconsin. Why wouldn't I just put the building on piers or something? Why would I seek to put an alternative foundation in the ground to solve that problem? Fair. Right. That's what I, I guess that's what I'm getting at is yeah. where did they come from and why do we care? So I know this is it's it's hard. And that's why I'm struggling. That's what the argument is, is why why don't I like it? Why don't I it, appreciate them it, and that and it's I'm just trying to get past the why do we do it well what am I trying to solve so I does it cost less I don't know 
Maybe it does. I bet it might. And as I, a carpenter, really you know, I'd rather frame something than pay somebody else to pour it. From a cost perspective, I would guess that uh, my framers could probably frame the walls, sheathe them, waterproof them, get them ready for backfill in about the same time that they could put up forms, put the steel in the forms, and pour and strip the forms. But you said just about the same amount of time, so there's no advantage. There is. We didn't pay for all that concrete because a wood-framed wall is less expensive for, you know, by foot because we're still going to have to put something on the inside of that wood frame wall if it's going to be a finished basement. We're still going to have to insulate both the walls. We're still going to have to do the same, roughly the same waterproofing on both the walls, right? We're still going to do a, a, a bitumen tar, yeah, yeah. some sort of coating. But I guess my point is, I can't even believe I'm saying this, but if I simplify things and it's like down to that level, then why not go to something like ICFs or something that makes it really simple, right? If I say it's, it's a small house, okay. If it's a small house and it's 20 by 30, that's like the perfect opportunity to use ICFs or the like, right? Yeah, well, so we're not answering the question of what makes you uncomfortable about the F, what foundations below great. But I will say that, you know, all these systems have yeah. pros and cons. So it seems like that? all of your arguments are, yeah, but I have this other system that yeah. I'm more no, familiar true. with. And, and the problem is if I did do something like ICFs or whatever, then the question is, well, how do I run electrical and all this, which a permanent... Well, a wood foundation does <laughs> solve for all that, right? Because I can drill holes in it and I can manipulate it like I do an above grade wall. Yeah. So it does work pretty well. What, what I struggle with is I know that you, in my mind, I know that you can detail a pressure treated wood system below grade so that it lasts the life of the building. Because that's what I'm most worried about is that I only get one chance to put that assembly below grade, and by gosh, if the whole house okay. fails because of something I did wrong so below grade. So this is kind of jokingly, but it's also, like, serious. When you talk about the life of the building, aren't you talking from the time you created it till the, the first part of significant failure? I guess so, yeah. So that if the foundation failed at some point 10 years down the road, that would... It lasted the life of the building. Well, okay. But I guess what I'm saying is that if we set the standard with concrete and I... As a hundred years. Yeah, but no. I, th that's the part of the building that I think is um, well beyond a hundred years. Like if, if part of the building's going to fail... I guess that's part of it, actually. Because like when you see concrete buildings or abandoned buildings... What's always left? The foundation. Right. Whether it's concrete or stone or whatever. But we have tons. I mean, where I grew up, you can go up in the woods and you can find old farmhouses that are long gone. Stone foundations are still on the ground. Yeah. yeah. And so that so that is maybe but is that is but that an overbuilding? Well, it just seems like the wood. Do we need it to like, last longer might, than the building? Do we need it to last longer than... No, exactly. We don't need it to last longer than the building, but we need it to last. And the question is, is there a risk of it being the first major failure in the building? Well, so that brings up another thing I think it's kind of cool about wood foundations is that if a part of it fails, I think I could fix it more easily than I could you can probably a concrete foundation. excavate it, go in, cut a section out, rebuild it, yeah. reapply the waterproofing and all of that, and you're probably right. And let me just say, I lived in a house that had a permanent wood foundation, but I've never A parsonage with a wood foundation? <laughs> it was not a parsonage. Oh. Nor a pear in a pear tree. I don't know why I associate those two I things. I have no idea where they have absolutely no connection in life whatsoever. <laughs> but well, no, you treat the term parsonage as nonsensical. So maybe that's why I do it. Like parsonage in a pear tree because... Because it doesn't make sense from the start. Anyway, my joke, so might as well just continue. Okay, so we've, we've questioned whether or not we should do it, but we haven't actually finished our conversation yeah. about the, the assembly, yeah. what it looks like. Yeah. So from the Permanent Wood Foundation handbook, I, for, I forget the exact title, sorry. Uh, number one, everything is uh, 0.6 rated, uh, ground, ground contact treated. Uh, all the studs, I believe that are 
or sorry, the plates have to be treated, but the studs do not because they're inboard of the the exterior. Have you ever seen a permanent wood foundation with the studs not pressure treated? No. I haven't. But no, yeah, okay. I haven't. But they technically but could I be. I think saying? that I think that the the PWF book says that they don't have to be. Hmm. I think that would be a silly risk to take. Well, the treatment doesn't make the stud any stronger. The no. grade of wood, southern yellow pine, is probably a slightly better grade than, say, spruce pine fir. Because of the would... absorption rate. But I don't, yeah. can you get spruce pine stronger. fir in a 0.6? I don't know if you can. You might be able to get because like structure market, select get... or something like that. Uh, or not sure. a better grade. Um, but or the question is, can I get southern yellow pine untreated? Right. Because if the treatment process is making it, giving it only preservative and not and by the way, the yeah. strength. out west they're not using southern yellow pine for pressure treatment. Yeah. They're yeah. using, I guess, Doug fir. Is Probably that Doug fir. Yeah. Uh, and then we have treated plywood on the exterior. And then we get to the actually the part that I think is probably the most important. There is a uh, I think uh, PWF calls for a bitumen-based or, or tar-based coating, uh, and then uh, poly mushed into that tar, and then they have specific backfill requirements, which is like, okay, if we take a foundation and we so coat it with something. Start? Where does that start? What do you mean, where does what start? Does I, that put come on, from? I put on a roll-on waterproofing, or spray-on waterproofing. Where's the first drop of spray go? Like, why is the outside of that wall more important than the bottom of the footing? Well, I, I think the detail that is most critical is going to be the junction between the free the, draining. Yeah. Substrate. Yeah, I would agree. But I'm just saying, it's like we, we we put the footing in, we put a wall above it, and then we sheath it, and then we waterproof it. Well, I don't have access to the underside of the that two by ten footing anymore. So why is that different than... Well, remember, the footing is free-draining gravel. I guess if I bury the wall... Well, not if I bury it, but if it's sitting on top of the wall. So let me ask you this. Would, if, I, if I just backfilled with three-quarter-inch stone for two feet... Probably do a hell of a lot for it. They probably really would. Yeah. And I, this came up when Jake and I were talking about this, but... Jake said the only home he lived in growing up that didn't leak was the one that had the permanent wood foundation and all the others were concrete. Yeah, but you made a really good point about that at lunch, which was, go ahead. No, no, you educate me. I like you telling me. Well, you how just, you, you had made the comment that because you did an alternative system, your height of consciousness in assembling that system was yeah. much higher. Yeah. So I think that when you do things like that, you pay attention more. Yeah. And so Which you is might get perfectly a fine though, right? System. Yes. We should just be paying that close of attention all the time. Oh, but for no, everything. But no, concrete sometimes it. we get sloppy because we no, we I think, oh, it's a, made out of concrete. We don't have to worry about those details. No, I want to do a wood foundation. <laughs> trying to think of the right product. So I think wood foundation with if you haven't listened to it, go back and listen to our uh how to build a house. I listen to floor. all the podcasts you do with I was me. talking to the listeners. Oh, sorry. The uh, how to yeah, because you're worried we're going to say something about you. Listen, I don't uh, really how to build a house without a floor. The the episode where we talk about slabless slab. Uh, oh. What if we pair the two of those together? What if it's permanent wood foundation, slabless slab, and then you have a house that doesn't sit on concrete with a floor that doesn't have any concrete. That's very interesting. And then you know. The first products lab built a demonstration home. We have what we call a tent. <laughs> yeah, we have a tent with a permanent wood foundation. And then actually, took. you said they took it apart and moved that house. Yeah, and I think it was that one, but it I'm may have been sure it is. Else. Yeah, I'm pretty they sure they relocated it and they reinstalled the same foundation. They didn't replace it. You know, it's one thing for us to get over the hurdle, but imagine <laughs> trying to pawn this off on a client. And trying to get them to believe, yeah, every house in America is built with a concrete or the like. Yeah, yeah, foundation. that's wasteful. We don't need it. We're going to, they're, they're all wrong, and we think you should put your million-dollar house on a wood foundation. Well, that's why when we talked about it, I said, well, I think that I have enough space in my backyard for an accessory dwelling unit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, like, let's do it like once that, so that we can convince somebody people. that truly wants, I guess, affordable, but we're... 
We'll, we'll talk you know, about and I, I, Steve, I'm right there with this. It's, it sort of comes back to the Q&A we just did, which is you can build a foundation yeah. out of but why pressure would wood, but do you, why, why should you? you know? And I think everything about it around the out, the, like everything that happens after the wood foundation is probably more important to me than the wood foundation. Right. 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 The waterproofing, the drainage, where does the water go, mm-hmm. all of that stuff. Because if we can solve for that... We essentially have a wood foundation buried in dry ground, which that's is there's fine. no challenge, right? But I but that resistance to, yeah, but I get one chance to do this, right? And so, and do it's, I, and it's the the idea that it like you were saying, I look at a, a wood stud wall and I look at a concrete wall. I can push over a wood stone wall, a wood stud wall. I can't push over the concrete wall. So mentally, that wall's a hell of a lot stronger than that, even though it doesn't need to be. Right. Right. It's there's this the the perception of it yep. is suggests that the concrete is just man, that's just a way better wall. Like and I could do like the perfect block, but that's still got concrete in it. So I'm still tied to yeah. the strength perception, even though it's not a continuous full width 10 inch wall. Um, I don't know. It's, it's really interesting. What is interesting too, that I was thinking about was you put the wood foundation in the ground, potentially the wood foundation in the ground would see less water than the above grade wall. Yep. But we mm-hmm. don't worry about building with wood up there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think what we're struggling with is, are these perception issues or... um, Because there's no doubt that regardless of what you use for a foundation system, if you don't do a good job with the moisture management details, there's going to be some compromise of... A consequence of sorts. A consequence and a compromise in the performance of the building to the inside of that assembly. So why are we so afraid of an assembly that really requires the same level of detail that any building does. Yeah, and I think, you know, part of it for me is is it's a total swap out. It's not just a little piece like, well, we're not going to put the slab in. We're still going to do the wall, but we're, yeah. we're just going to take the slab out and put a floor in. In this condition, we're taking it all out and replacing it with a totally different system. And so when we do a permanent wood foundation there will be a portion of it that is above grade. And the portion of concrete foundations above grade, we expect to see something cementitious. So how do you de- how do you finish the exposed portion yeah, I don't of, know a con- the, of a pressure-free foundation? If you do a really cool reason. black waterproofing, you can just have a black foundation. Yeah, but... That's UV sensitive, you know, and weed whackers and UV stuff. So I'm just, I don't know. I'm asking concrete for the above grade section. (laughs) Make it look right. Get some precast. Talk about perception issues. Precast concrete and make it look like a real concrete. And I don't think about it's parging. You just have to try. Think about any degrees of depth. Like if you said, let's do a per uh, permanent, but a a wood. (laughs) I can't what? even say I can't. It just <laughs> bothers me. Yeah, we're doing a nine-foot basement versus a a three-foot crawl ranch. space. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Or um, yeah. So if you did said let's do a treated wood crawl space, I'd be like, yeah, cool. I wouldn't even question it then. Hmm. That difference in three to eight feet or nine feet for some reason bothers water me column. a little more. Yeah, well, it's water column, but it's. I think a lot of it is that perception of I'm switching from concrete to. This wood cavity stud wall that it just doesn't seem right, even though I know it is. I never. Uh, th- these are very difficult words for me to hear yeah, from you are. because you're. It's a challenge. And I know you're struggling. This is a conversation too. with Steve where we're backing it. He's backing up his argument with feelings, <laughs> which is <laughs> feelings. I didn't even know existed. Oh, feelings. So I ha- I don't know what the numbers are. I never like that. In song. terms of how many homes are currently being built with permanent wood foundation systems. It would be interesting. How many homes do you think across the country have? I bet not right very now? many. Not very many. When you you say, know, so when you, you say not very is, many, are you talking 100, 1,000? I, I bet less than 100 in wow. a year. Wow. But you know what it is? And, and you know this is exactly what it is. There's a company, and they do seven or eight a year. That's the way they do it. 
Mm-hmm. And then five counties over, there's a guy that he was friends with in the 70s when they both worked for one guy. And now there's mm-hmm. now they build five or six houses a year and they use the... It's that sort of thing. It's not like there's builders everywhere dabbling in and it. And I think that's there's probably a dozen part, of, that part of the fear, too. It's a non-commercialized mm-hmm. system. Like, mm-hmm. I might not like ICF. I might like ICF, and I'm not trying to bash them. I'm just using them. But they're a system out there that's thought out, engineered, and all of this stuff. The well, wood hold on. Wall, this has been around. This is taking the wall you build above grade. Yeah, and, and the standards have been around since the 70s. 90% of the wood framed homes out there probably have not been engineered. They're there by fortunate um, over, over engineering. Well, you know, if it's code cool. compliant, it's engineered, though. I get that, but what I'm saying is, is so there's... let's take Farley for an example. The, the yeah. you you are using the ICCF system with them because of the special problems of building on the vineyard, right? Well, there were a number of things there. One, we but were... but, it, but I would really be interested in a conversation with him about permanent wood foundations. I'm going to ask him how he would feel about it. Yeah, that would but, be it. Would be interesting. Okay, so if, if you're listening to say, this, I might not know. Peter I guess, and I will he might to hear. say, I don't know. And he might have the same. Yeah, it'd just be good because clearly he made the easy. It was a relatively easy switch for him to try ICCF. Yeah, um, and that is such a cool. That is a really cool system. Like you under his basement, it's like yeah, yeah, this is cool. We can do this again. So it's in the code. Yep. Forest Products Labs done research on it. Um, We know it can be detailed properly, but I I still think the reason we're probably talking about hundreds of these homes as opposed to ten, thousands or tens of thousands is back to the question of how many customers are you going to have to convince yep. about? Well, you know what's really interesting system. that I just thought of is I have this problem with using it below grade. Now, when we come above grade, I have a problem arguing against the wood frame wall, <laughs> which is a struggle. Like, why would I switch or do a house out of ICF or why would I put concrete? We had somebody approach us that wanted to do a concrete house. Mm-hmm. And I told the builder, I said, I can't think of a much dumber thing to do <laughs> on an all concrete house. Well, and so if you listen to Peter and I's podcast, which I know you did, uh, about uh, houses that we lived in and we talked about it, that perception idea, it took my parents five years to sell that house. So, oh, wow. That's Nobody wanted to buy it. Because, and, and they, you knew because that it had a wood foundation in it. And it had yeah. already been up for like 20 years or something. Yeah, it was 10 years old by the time they sold it. And it was dry basement. And it was a dry, dry basement, basement with yeah. no problems. Yep. But Some things die hard. It is, yeah. And it's like we've all held rotten wood in our hands. Yeah. yeah. And the idea of putting it below grade just... There's so many bad associations with it. It's a tough hurdle. Be, it'd be good to talk to Mike Gurton. Did, in the BS and Beer, did they talk about the problem of public perception at all? Uh, I don't remember. We'll have to go back and watch it yeah. again. Yeah. I recommend you guys check out their podcast, too, if you haven't. Uh, the, they cover a broad range of topics. Who's that? Uh, the BS and Beer uh, podcast. Travis Berngart. Uh, ben Bogey, um, hmm. Emily Matram, and then Mike Maines is involved as well. I need to well. check them out. I've never even heard of them. I'm going to have to check it out. <laughs> it's funny because uh, it seems to me you've been on their podcast yes, multiple times. times. He's done it at least twice with me. <laughs> yes, yeah, there messing. we go. Messing with them. Okay, so I played it slightly close to the chest. I'm not sure if I would actually do one or not. It's so would you scary. Do, so <laughs> would you do it for your own house? That that's always uh, I I do man. that with my clients a lot. Like if it were my home, would you do it for your own house? Yeah, I, my, like I said, I think I could swallow the crawl space pill. Really, that's probably quick. where I would stop, though. Yeah, I don't. So know, my answer, depth. I have not seen enough actual projects. I saw. And the ones the with reason, Gert, and I want to say those weren't full depth. They were like five feet or something yeah. at the most. In a lot of like su- suplexes or raised ranches or something. Yeah. Because yeah. there was something about him that I said, yeah, that's probably the threshold when I saw him. Yeah, I need, to, I need to actually be in more of them. Okay, we're going to see Mike in the next few days. Let's talk to him about it. I'll make we can a corner point. him, and you can put your finger on his chest while he talks and, and say, make hey, sure you. Mike Gert. A question for you, man. 
Good one. Couldn't tell if that was threatening or sexual. <laughs> I got a question for you, man. <laughs> How about asking our beautiful audience if they have any thoughts and <laughs> where can they okay. submit? He's got a good point. So if you are uh, watching the podcast on YouTube, leave a comment. Let's hear it. If you've built one, reach out to us. We want to see pictures. We want to hear your opinion. I want to fly there and check it out and walk through it. And yeah, it's, I mean, it's worth exploring. I think it's an interesting conversation. And if not, it leads to some place that maybe is an interesting conversation at some point. Yeah, it is a very, very interesting. I Don't forget it. to subscribe. Don't forget to click the like button, leave a comment, all those things. Leave us a five star review on iTunes. And until next time, thanks for watching. I'm Jake Bruton, and these are my compatriots of the Unbuild It podcast, Steve Basic and Peter Yost. I'm a compatriot. Thanks for joining us. Yes, compatriot. I'm a compatriot. Have a good day.